Welcome to Dyson Square Program. My name is Nilao, so this is episode 33 of our Let's Play campaign. And I was just about to say that it would be obvious what our problem was. And then a, a bit more of the uh, purple came in. And that was uh, the whole point was that I wanted to start and show you that everything was working except for the purple. So uh, thank you for messing with my... There we go. Okay, I'll start now. There we go. Welcome to... Oh, never mind. Right, so um, as you can definitely see here, we are still going strong with our amazing Let's Play. And what we have now is all but the purple science. It's like Factorio where purple science is the worst. Actually, I don't know if it's the worst, but green is more important because it's kind of... It is actually kind of like purple science. You leapfrog over purple to get the last science and then we go back to purple because it's so awful and it's less important. You want to get the warpers here. Uh, make sure that keeps going in the lenses, so... Let's start. That's why we do the greens first. So now it's only the purple that's left, and uh, it's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a challenge, but a, a good challenge. We have uh, processors. We think we have enough processors, but probably not. Maybe not uh, at the right scale that we need because we both need it for quantum chips and for purple science. But we're going to focus on the particle com particle broadband today because it's really interesting. I mean, I think so. Particle broadband is used only for the purple science, but also for some assembling machines mark three and actually quite a lot but you can also say that the stuff we already have on our home planet could then be just dedicated to making the broadband for these assemblers and then we can take all the stuff that we're going to build now working towards uh, the purple sign so we're going to need 30 of these per second and which means we need 60 carbon nanotubes and 60 crystal crystal silicon and i want to make sure that we do these kind of things in using the all the alternate recipes because i think it's much more valuable if we look at the complexity of this either three graphene plus graphite or we can do the spiny form that's much easier so one spiny form to one nanotube oh yes and here it doesn't maybe seem like a big improvement but i think it's actually uh, it actually is quite an improvement because you just mine one material as long as you have the fractal silicon then just mine one thing and then you just get it directly instead of mining two they're mining two silicon to go once pure silicon to go one yeah that's uh, extra steps extra steps makes it more complicated uh, okay, so we are going to leave this a beautiful planet, but we want all of these towers lighting up. And this sphere is done, so also on the sort of the horizon is to make more more spheres somewhere. Unfortunately, the safe game size is our true bottleneck in this space. Uh, if only I knew where I was going. Kappa Hydri, yes. So, I don't know if you remember, Kappa Hydri, the, it's actually easy to remember. Hydri, Hydro, that's the water planet. The water planet ha was where we got our oil and then we did it somewhere else. But uh, the Kappa Hydri is where we got our oil, but we also had a lot of spiny form. So let's go to this location, grab some spiny form, and then from there, we're gonna figure out where we're gonna build it. We're gonna build it actually, since we have on the Acellus Prime, as well as primers, we are making the green science, so I think I want to build it at, out there as well, because there are really vast resources out there. We are already coming up on Kappa Hydra 1, I think. Let's try it. Let's try one. Looks blue. Ah, okay. Yes, that's the one. Our Pokeball. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Imagine terraforming a world like this. It might have a slight influence on the sea life. As someone mentioned last time, I think it's really cool. Imagine doing this and just waiting a million years and then just seeing what would happen with the evolution of sea creatures in each of these four expanses. They used to be the same, so they used to be to be sort of a homogenous force. And then over about a million years or so, we can just uh, we can just observe how because they can't interact with each other they will start evolving separately hmm, very interesting concept although a bit outside of the scope of this uh, of, of this playthrough and this game so here we have our spiny form that is uh, let's have a look at it S uh, spiny form stalagmite crystal nine million nine million is at a level where i'm just gonna go i'm never gonna run out look at that oh that looks really cool up close nice yeah um go away there there you go that's just pressing F11. Uh, That's the screenshot mode. Looking good. Looking good. Yeah, it looks... Oh, yeah. And we're back. 
All right, so what I need to do is find how many of those we have and then mine them to us here and here. If um, if we are just going to take a look at, ah, where is it? It's, we have 14.7 million and we're just gonna pave this. Actually, I don't wanna pave it like this. I just don't, we'll pretend that it's just sand we have in our pocket there. So we take that one and we go over to this one, basically, just fly over and just lift it out of the ocean and then build some mining. Let's take, have a look at how many we have. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, they're about a million each. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to mine this. Uh, that's uh, We all know how to set up a mine. So let's just come back when that's done. I think this is a good opportunity to just uh, reiterate the, the point about it would be nice if there was a late game option to mining where maybe you just stamp one of these down and then it mined the stuff around it. Ah, that would be nice. Like an orbital collector, except um, not or not for gas giants. But yeah, we have now hooked up all of these. Nope, we have not. How did I miss that one? Oh, I was just... <laughs> All right, well, I guess, uh, no, I, <clears throat> I uh, of course, left this one open so that we could do that together. So you get the joy of setting up just uh, at least one of those. Yeah, that's 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 the, that's my story. I'm gonna stick with that. And we'll just build some of these. When you build stuff at this scale, I really don't care if we're missing one in the middle or something like that. If there's something unpowered, yeah, the kind of sucks, but, Ultimately, I don't even think I will be going back to fix these kind of things. There. Let's get these up and running. So this, yeah. So I, I of course, uh, save this one so that we could uh, do it together. And you can see how I do this. If you have a good idea on how to do this faster in a non-silly way, I don't know what silly way would be uh, entailing, but... Um, this is kind of how I do it, and I kind of generally just take how many I can. It's usually going to be somewhere like six, seven, eight, sometimes nine, and then I just split it into two. And yeah, that's uh, that's generally how I do it, and uh, it's 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 working okay. Let's get this in, and oops, we have missing that. So get that in here, yeah, and it gets some warpers. There. All right, so that one is good, except for the power. Ah, you thought you were gonna you were gonna mention it. Cool. So now we have tapped all the spiny form, I hope, on this planet, and uh, it's it's now ready to go in and ready to be exported to somewhere useful. Uh, let's just go up here. This planet is really just a mining operation. There. Spiny form, spiny form, and two more. That's four. And then we just took five and then six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So those are the ten total. Eleven, maybe? I don't know. It's enough. <clears throat> it's all of them. So now we have all the spiny form available. And the question is just where are we going to work on it? I'm not going to work on it here. We could, but then I'm going to have to... Oh, oh, there's one more thing I wanted to show you. Here, yeah, that is how much do we have left? And 12.4. So for this one, we've been spending 2.3 million soil paths. So not really a big deal. I mean, I I could probably, I don't know, maybe I could fill in one of those quadrants, but not more than that. And I don't really feel there's a need to use this planet for anything. It's not particularly interesting. So what we'd really like to do is just fly away into the midnight. Come on. Uh, how am I not lifting off? There we go. Sail mode. Okay, we're going to fly into the night sky and find something more interesting. And that more interesting thing is Acellus Primus 2. Because that's where we also have, if we just look at Acellus Primus as we go there, should be good. This is, uh, we have some optical crystal, probably not a lot. We have some fractal silicon. That's the stuff we need. And we have some kimberlite. And we used the kimberlite to make the diamonds. And some fire ice. I think we used that. Maybe we didn't. But this planet is definitely where we're going to be working on the fractal silicon. We're going to grab that and uh, work on this one. So uh, the first part of this uh, episode will be just harvesting the materials. And the second part will be combining it with uh, 
harvesting these rare materials and then the second part will be combining them into the product so we're gonna go there and then uh, yeah well let's let's see when we arrive at the at this new location all right we're coming up on ourselves primus let's have a look at what this uh, planet can offer for us in the meantime all of the spiny form is now farmed at back at our kappa hydri and it's just ready to go although there's a long way to go and here we are so this planet is completely desolate no one has ever set foot on this planet and uh, all we have is oh wait a minute we have uh, a beautiful little hub unfortunately we don't have enough purples here yeah would be nice if we get it but this is the whole point of what we're doing is that we're going to be able to supply more purple and yeah obviously we're running out but I have uh, just been here in preparation, just setting up a hub so that we just always have something to land and somewhere to to explore. This is a brand new planet. It has Kimberlite. That's very nice. Oh, let's actually look at the planet as such. So it has some Kimberlite. Ooh, lots of Kimberlite. Lots of fractal. 23 million. Not a lot of optical grading, but you know, if this is just, uh, if it's 1 million, we just tap it and then send it off to, well, to the network and make it available for solar sails or whatever we use it for. It's actually only solar sails. Uh, other things, titanium ore, we don't care. Um, silicon, very nice amounts of silicon. So maybe we should also make this like a dedicated silicon. Let's actually remember this so that if we run out of silicon, which is definitely going to happen at some point, then probably this is a the easiest location to tap it because each location is 5 million. That would be super nice. We're not going to do it right now. We're going to focus on taking the fractal. Let's have a look at what the fractal looks like. I think the fractal looks really good. I think all of these rare ores actually look really nice. This is the kimberlite. This is what we get diamonds from. I mean, silicon also looks nice. Uh, but it does not look as nice as the fractal silicon. Oh, it's just a re uh, rehash of the kimberlite. But it's, it's still good. So what we need to do is, well, you've uh, seen it before. We are going to just get all of this available. And then once we have it, we're just going to use it on this planet. And let's see. Oh, look at that. That's interesting. All of the materials are here, which means there's tons of space for us to build here. Oh, that's really cool. And there is our one tab. Yeah, let's uh, let's hook this up and then, uh, then we can start building some of the nanotubes and some of the crystal silicon and then potentially hopefully also the particle broadband and so we're back we have now hooked up all of the crystal or fractal silicon around the world and also down here also the optical crystal there's only one million but yay why not uh, just tab it anything else not really we have uh, vast quantities of both copper and silicon but i'm not going to do that right now it's because that's boring and also what else do we have we also have kimberlites it's also very nice but we're not going to do that now we're going to do that when we need it and what i've also done is make a little bend around the north pole that's where we're going to build so what we're going to start with now that we have our rare materials the rare materials being our fractal silicon and our spiny form then let's start working on it we're going to start by making it here and this one will request spiny form inbound all the way away from somewhere far away and it'll give us some nanotubes yes so that's easy and we're going to look at the recipe it's going to be in one of these and i think we could do something oh no it's not it's actually going to be one of here let's try that one so you are going to get that one and this is working on a one second cycle Let's see, down here, one second, and this is working on a, well, it's actually crafting speed one, but on a four second cycle. So it uses four, two every four seconds or one every two seconds. So one every two seconds, that means I can do that 15 down there. And if I make it 15, then it's not gonna consume enough. Well, that's actually fine. So what I'll do is I'll take this one as a return and then have these on either side. That should be very, very straightforward. There. We'll just do this one. And on the other side. Like that. And then we have to go on the outside for return for the last one. There. 
And now we just uh, need to build it all the way over. Let's see, that is the outwards one. I don't know how big it's going to be. Let's assume that it takes about this size here. So that it doesn't go into the next quadrant. Hopefully it'll take slightly less. That one. And last one down here. Cool. Now let's set the inserters, or sorry, sorters. That goes from here, here. Oops, the other way. No, that is super incorrect. It's really difficult to see if things are inbound or outbound. And now I just completely lost it here. All right, I'm gonna start here. There, because it goes from the middle and out. Middle and out. Middle and out and middle and out. Yes, that's the one. All right, cool. Let's uh, hook this one up and just uh, see how it goes. While we're at it, I'm probably going to say so it's going to be 15 of these. And there we go. Now those have been added. I am going to here we have this. I'm going to do not local demand. Nope, but uh, remote demand. Yes. And then we'll fly over to that one because I actually made two of these. We build the one together and then I just added another one on top of it because of course I did. Uh, this one will not be enough. And I just need to get some warpers in here because I don't know. This one probably should have been put warpers in first. And let's get some warpers in there. Maybe they'll send it out. No, actually not. Okay, so what we're doing here. How did I figure this out? Uh, each one is on a four second cycle, making two per second. So this one will make two. And then if I have 15 rows, that's going to be 30. And then I need 60 because um, if we look at the recipe here, this recipe... I need 30 of the particle broadband because that's what I need for 30 science cubes. So 30, 30, and that means 40, and uh, no, sorry, 60 of these. So I needed two of these builds. That's how much we did. And that's, um, it's all there. It's good. Let's go over to the other one. That's probably the one that comes in first. Not really received any more purple science in the meantime. Bit disappointed. Not gonna lie, bit disappointed about that. Here. Oh, actually, maybe I have an idea. No, that's not an idea. I thought that I could actually get that here. All right, let's uh, wait for this to come in. We are at the far end of the universe, so it might take a bit of time. Here they come. That was the first one. I should be seeing more of these. Oh, there we go. There's a lot more coming into the other one as well. I think they're all just, they're just chunked on top of each other right now. Yeah, they were just chunked on top of each other. Let's see if it works. Yes. Yes, all right, we get some spiny form. Let's see if it just goes all the way down. The way what you should look at is the little yellow dot on each of these machines right there. It should disappear as it starts uh, actually producing and it'll come back if it cannot uh, output successfully. There, it went all the way to the end of the line. So that means everything is working, at least input wise. All this is also good and it's all coming back to this one so that's looking good all right that is now one big step forward 
So what is the next step? The next step is actually using the fractal silicon that we made on this planet into something more useful that we can use. Let's have a look at that. What, um, what, where, why, how we can build this. And thank you, Autosave. This uh, half, half a gigabyte of Autosave. Yay. Um, where would we want to make it? Mm, could make it here. Now let's make it somewhere where we have a bit more space. That's probably a good lo location. So let's take this one out and build here. So let's uh, walk through what it is we want. We now want to take all of the fractal silicon we've harvested here on the planet and make that into some crystal silicon. Don't expect to have any warpers, but on the other hand, we probably do need it. Let's take some of the warpers I already have and put that in here and let's get some power. I don't know. I feel I'm doing it the wrong sequence by doing this one first instead of actually figuring out what we want here. Okay. <clears throat> and power uh, here. Let's also make sure that we have some spacing for it. Some concrete. Make this planet beautiful. Hide the ugly between behind some concrete. Oops. Uh, I guess you're going to be paved over. That's kind of kind of bad. Uh, do I feel bad about it? See, that's why I shouldn't have done it. Yeah, I do feel bad about this one because okay, let's just figure out how big we have to make it, and then see if there's a better location for it. I think it would be better to make it here. Yeah, we'll um, casually abandon this idea. And go to the next one. It's going to be more space here. Yep. All right. Let's uh, figure out where have some more concrete that we have here, and we'll tile this one. So, okay. So what is it? It's on a four-second cycle. We know that, and it is made in an assembler, so it's still affected by the 1.5 second craft or 1.5 craft time. So that's something as well. That's good. So if I have it on a one point, f no, forget the 1.5. If I have it on a one second crafting speed and I need 60 per second, then I need four times 60, that's 240. And now we can divide by 1.5, that's 100, 160 in total. So I need to make 160 assemblers. Yay, yay. Uh, good thing we have this mod. Let's also make sure that we get just a bit more of everything we need here. Uh, that one is definitely needed. That one's definitely needed. And we probably need a bit of this as well. There. Good. So on the other hand, the upside is that it's pretty damn e easy to make. And we do this one again. It's easy to make. We're going to make it like it's uh, like it's a smelting column, which means we go outbound and then that one will go in. Then I'll make one, two, three, four. That will go inbound here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. No, no, no. It's easy because it's right next to it. One, two, three, four. Ah, uh, that is not enough. Oh, you know what? It's so slow that we can actually make it in a slightly different way. We can just go, this is returning. And then this one should be able to support both sides. And then I just need another one. So that's four, and then I have returns. Return to that one. And another row. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Outbound. Oops.
Last one. And then return, which will then hit all the way back on the back side. There. Oh yes, that means we now have eight. Eight in a row, and if I want 60, then it's just 20 deep. Uh, when, if I want 160, then it's just 20 deep. So I need to make this for 20 deep. Okay, well, that can be definitely be done. This one should also be fractal. Copy, paste, 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 paste. We're probably going to replace it anyway. And let me see. This is out. How much, how big do we think? Like this, is that 20? Yeah. Probably is. And so we build the 160 of these and night has fallen in the meantime. It should be pretty straightforward to get up here. And uh, let's see, we are going that one, that one. And let's also get warpers because you never know. Maybe they'll be provided somewhere else. Again, I should have done that first. All right, I am going to do local supply. Mm, do I want to go do global supply as well? I don't really know if I do want to that. I'll do global supply as well. Just. Maybe I'll have something else, but I want to make sure that the local fills up first. And that it does. I love this part where it's just... That is 10,000, and then as soon as it goes out, you can see all of these start huffing and puffing, and it will be working pretty efficiently, I think. That leaves just one more thing that we want to bake, and that... Uh, bake? Make and bake? That will be our uh, our broadband from here. Yes, so that means we should make broadband. Uh, could we could we build it? Where could we build it? Where would be a good place to build it? I kind of I kind of don't want to build it any further. Maybe we could use the spot that we didn't use for the other thing. Let's see. Could we use this one? Yeah, we could use that one. And move it the other way. Yep, that is, looks uh, quite decent. It doesn't take as much space, and then we'll just hit it the other way. All right, so broadband. That's uh, that's the whole point of all of this. The one interesting thing, though, about the broadband is that the broadband requires plastic, and we don't actually have a sort of industrial scale plastic build. So we're gonna have to just leach from the plastic back home. And my guess is. It might be okay, but it also definitely is not going to be okay over time. So we know we need to make some plastic, but I don't think that's... Well, I know that that's not going to be in this episode. It's way too much. We uh, should set ambitious but realistic goals. Let's get some nanotubes. We've done that. We get some crystal silicon. We got that. We get some plastic. Uh, we kind of hope we have that somewhere. Where's the plastic? There it is. And that one and this one definitely needs this I can also see that I have run out of warpers I still haven't received enough to uh, to get a full purple belt around that one and that one let's start here and then just there okay we're not gonna request anything else but let's uh, try to figure out how this is gonna be made uh, I I have no idea. 
I have no idea. Let's see. So it's very, very slow. So that means output is not going to be a problem. That's for sure. I can combine. I suppose we can combine something that is. Okay, I have a plan. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, I was thinking how what we could combine, but if I just look at this one, what if we get these two in here? Then the most important question to answer before we do any bulk thing is, if this is putting 30 out here and this one is then consuming, there. This one is consuming one every four seconds. So, if there was crafting speed one, I could have 120 assemblers connected to one belt. But it is not crafting speed one, it's crafting speed 1.5, so I can have 80 assemblers picking up from a belt. And that's gonna be 40 on either side. If I get 40 on either side, all right, so that's our maximum we can, we can take. We can take 40 in a row, that's the maximum, and then we'll consume a full belt. So that's, that's good to know. I suspect we need a lot of this. Let's see. So I need 30 per second. That's 30 times eight. Really? Uh, well, three times eight, that's 240 of these. And again, okay, so it's gonna be 160. And if we found out that we can do it 40 deep, then I'm gonna do four rows. No, yeah, four rows of 40, that's 140. So that's also kind of how I do all these calculations. It's it might be not so easy to keep up with, but you basically figure out what is the, the thing you want is how much do you want output? Figure out how much each one consumes, figure out how many you can have in a row to, to consume a full belt. And then you sort of just start manipulating those numbers until you find something you like. And this is one of the things, and it's kind of, kind of sad, but someone mentioned it in, uh, in a comment and uh, it's kind of stuck with me and it's it's made then now i'm gonna ruin it for you is that uh, as much as i i really like this game and and yeah i i do then i also have to acknowledge that every single build looks the same and that's kind of something that's starting to bother me i mean it's nice to be able to to have some standard templates of just going all right well i know this one this is going to be here this is going to be here but at the end of the day, if you really look at sort of comparatively to Factorio, for example, or the Satisfactory for that matter, builds are way more different in in both games. There are more inputs, there are different ways of input. There's liquids, there's solids. Uh, here, it's you things go on belts and you just figure out if it's one, two, one input, one output, that's one option, two inputs, one output, or three inputs, one output. And that's basically the options you have. And that means you have some really, really clean templates for it. Uh, that, which is both good and bad. I mean, it's really nice to have some nice templates. But on the other hand, it's also, once you have the templates, well, uh, the inner one is the out. And the outer one is the in. That makes sense. Yeah, so this is something that I hope that Either they will be, they can solve it in two different ways. They can either go, yep, that's that's how it is. Melting columns are just melting columns. In Factorious, melting columns are super boring as well. But the problem, or the not problem, the, the thing is, we don't really care that smelting columns are so boring because there are other things that are way more interesting. So smelting column is just something that, okay, well, we've set up the many of those and we send out robots. Did you, by the way, look at, notice the, the tweet? I retweeted that and uh, replied to it that it seems like the reason why the planets are all the same size is because it makes it easier for them to do planetary blueprints. How about that for a reveal? I think that's pretty uh, interesting. If you, basically, it sounds like, let's say, let's say I want to make a blueprint of this one, then this blueprint can only be stamped down at this location. Maybe it could also be stamped down at, at around the South Pole, but those would be the options. You couldn't take this one and move it down here because it's then on the wrong s sort of space in terms of the plan. So imagine, I mean, now I'm just imagining how I would implement it. And so basically you have a blueprint of, of let's say this build, 
then it will snap to this location and you can sort of drag it around or you can drag it down here. You can potentially flip it so it goes clockwise, counterclockwise, but that means there are very limited ways that it can be placed. I think that's going to be, that would be a super nice way of doing planetary blueprints. I don't know how big they can do. I don't know anything except that uh, the comment. So I think that would be really interesting. It's not something, well, I don't know. Is, is it something I need? Mm, of course it's something I need, but right now it's not the what I need the most. I have no idea what I'm doing. Yes, that looks good. I don't think I messed it up. All right, let's build this and we're going to have to get it out to 40. So it's going to be much bigger than this, but let's, uh, let's see how far we can make it. Right, so that's 140 additional of these set up. Let's uh, start just requesting. I'm going to start by requesting this one and please make it work. Oh dear. I thought, I thought this was going to be a good episode, a good episode and no. All right. Wow. Wow. Well, I guess I know what we're going to do in the next episode. <laughs> oh, I th I thought that we would have plastic. There are two options. Either plastic is just not enabled for global export, or it has run out. Or, well, two options. So I mentioned three. Off by one. <laughs> there are two problems in... In what? There are two problems in programming. Cache invalidation and... I don't know. And off by one. I don't know. I can't remember it. Let me know in the comment. I, I can't remember that joke. But it's cache validation. It's something and it's off by one. Errors. Um, right. So the issues are potentially either my plastic is not exporting to the remotely. Or it has run out of materials. Or it is jammed because uh, something else is, is there. Um, I think I know what it is. I think I know it's graphite that has run out because coal has run out. I think that's it. But that's um, that's going to be... Um, it sucks to let end an episode like this, right? So we look at each other and go like, is that all right if I just um, zoom back and we just take a look at it? Uh, let's agree that if, it is, if it's because we've run out of coal globally, then it's not something we just fix, but it is something we're going to just take a look at. Let's uh, jump all the way back. Luckily, you don't have to fly. You can just uh, sleep, cryo sleep your way there. So let's uh, jump back and see if what the issue is and see if we can get it just a bit up and running. So every time we warp, we should be thinking about, uh, well, at least I want to draw your attention to the patrons who are supporting the channel and uh, the work I do here on the uh, as a content creator. So thank you very much to uh, the people who are choosing to support this little endeavor here, my little modest corner of YouTube. And I am arriving at least to one part. And now we just have to find our little planet, our little satellite, our little moon actually. It's not a planet, it's a moon, our home moon. There it is. And there's still one swimming pool. Let's see if we can hit the swimming pool. Nope, we could not hit the swimming pool. All right, let's see why we are, why we're out of plastic. We have a nice big plastic build somewhere 
really close to the equator and I can't remember exactly where but it's if we just fly around then we should be able to see it well of course it's we start as far away as possible there that is plastic aha aha yep so we know the answer the answer is an acute lack of graphite yeah so we are gonna go on a coal quest next time to make and then we should probably also make some better plastic than uh, than what we have here i mean this is nice plastic but i really don't think plastic like this should be made on our home planet cool well that's uh, unfortunately not something we can just fix so it'll have to be the way it is and then we have something it's called a cliffhanger to next episode so we're going to wrap it up here. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see the combination of how we do this, how we fix the plastic, and also when we have all that stuff, it's just a matter of getting the purple science up and running after that. So you got to you gotta be able to, to see the next episode. The best way to do that is, of course, subscribe to the channel and like the video so other people can see it as well. Thank you very much for watching. I will be back next time. Until then, take care. And as always, stay effective.